Harriet Tubman was just another slave girl. 27 years of humiliation, beating and whipping. All that she could endure, but not what was ahead of her. She was about to be sold to a cotton plantation deep down south, hundreds of miles away from her husband and family. The sweat and tears in the cotton fields almost felt sweet compared to the pain of being exiled. Everyone has a breaking point. Harriet Tubman had just reached hers. She wasn't gonna swallow any more pain. She was ready to take what belonged to her. And so that night, she decided to leave. She had to follow the North Star and the river up to the bridge. She knew all that because this old woman told her so. A Quaker, not like the other whites around here. She was friendly, asked for her scars. And before leaving, she told Harriet to come to her house if she ever needed help. And she showed her the way. Harriet hiked all night through the woods, avoiding the wolves and the rattlesnakes. Each mile was a battle, stakes were high, as she had no intention to play catch up with the slave catchers. She made her way to the woman's house. There she was given food and clothes, and she learned that there were other safe places like this for her to hide on her way to Pennsylvania. More than two weeks and 130 miles later, exhausted, she finally reached the promised land. She made it. She had gained her For an incoming fugitive, Philadelphia was a huge shock. The seaport was filled with black sailors. The streets bustled with black vendors peddling matches and flowers, roasting chestnuts and oysters. As the natural getaway between North and South, Philly maintained the largest free African-American community in the US. At the time, one in 12 people in Philadelphia was black. Harriet had reached the promised land. But what was the promise exactly? She was free, but she was just another free stranger, lost in the notion of nameless faces. She missed her family so much that she couldn't feel any joy. It wasn't freedom if she was the only one to be free. Her mind was clear now. Her mission, obvious. She would go back to Maryland and free her family. In 1850, she showed up in Baltimore just before a slave auction and rescued her niece, Kidzy, and her two children. The following year, she managed to smuggle one of her brothers and two other men out of their plantation. Her third mission was the most ambitious. Years ago, John Tubman, Harriet's husband, a free man, had decided to stay at the brother's plantation the day she had escaped. But she had forgiven him. He was her husband and she wanted him back in her life. So she bought him a nice suit and made it all the way down to the plantation. Only to find out that he had married again with a free woman who was expecting his child. She thought about punching him in the face, making a scene. She didn't. She waited as the last remains of hope for a normal life vanished in tears. She must accept it. God had other plans for her. And they started now. She turned around and took on board every goddamn soul who wanted to leave the bloody place. Relatives, strangers, whoever. That night, that. 11 people disappeared from the plantation. A legend was born. A rebel slave who parted cotton fields like the Red Sea to free her people. They called her Moses. Her name was whispered on the wind in every plantation. So it was only a matter of time before she got recruited by a legendary secret organization. They called it the Underground Railroad. Of course you understand, it wasn't a real railroad at all. It was a network of people who, like Harriet, believed that it was okay for slaves to escape from slavery. Then they used railroad terms. Station master housed the slaves. And conductor obviously conducted them to a safe place. Conductors only guided the slaves from one safe house to the next. But there was a special kind of conductors. Those who ventured all the way to the plantations to rescue the slaves were called abductors. And Harriet Tubman was the most famous of all. Over 11 years, Moses made 13 expeditions, rescued over 70 people and never lost a single passenger. The journey was always hard and scary. Sometimes the passenger would get so scared that he would want to turn around and go back to the plantation. Going back? 
that wasn't in Moses' book. So usually, the poor guy ended up biting on the cold, hard steel of Harriet's pistol, meditating hard over the two options she would give him, freedom or death. Harriet's record is, in itself, extraordinary. What makes it legendary is that she wasn't a free white man like the other abductors. She was a five feet tall runaway slave and entire states were desperately trying to capture her. And yet, she was impossible to catch. A master of camouflage, always using fake IDs and fake beards. Just like that, she would disappear. For 11 years, Harriet Tubman has been a living legend, a ghost, a shadow with guts and a shotgun. The Civil War broke out in 1861. Slavery was at the core of the hatred. 200 years of trading blood for wealth. Harriet, like many more, was eager to join the battle. But how? She wasn't a soldier, not even a free man. She had to get close to the action first. And after years spent in the Underground Railroad, she knew powerful people, abolitionists. So she reached out to James Montgomery, a Union Infantry Colonel, and a true anti-slavery zealot. His military tactics were... Unusual, as you will see, but he was entirely dedicated to the cause. In 1863, after months petitioning the War Department, Montgomery had finally been authorized to raise one of the first all-black regiment in US history. And he asked Harriet to join him. Until then, all of her attacks upon the institution of slavery had been at the amateur level. But now, she was about to go pro. Montgomery's strategy was clear, weaken the South by destroying their economic base. He was a guerrilla warfare connoisseur, an epicure of annihilation. And he was now planning his next move, a down raid into the plantations of the Combahee River. But to set up his military operation, he needed spies to infiltrate and map out the enemy territory. And who could guide a bunch of spies into a labyrinth of swamps, rivers and forests without getting noticed, better than the great Moses herself. So she picked her team and got to work. And she would soon see the fruits of her labor. On the 2nd of June, 1863, three federal ships headed up to the Combahee River. Standing on the deck of the first one, guiding the pilots, was Moses. Like in the good old days, there was no place for luck. She knew the location of every mine in the river, and every enemy in the bushes. The Union troops storm into the plantation, 150 black men eager for justice, but happy enough with payback. They emptied the stores of rice and cotton and torched the mills and homes. And in a blaze of glory, all slaves ran free. The planter's precious capital investment was rushing at boats in a bizarre shambles. That night, more than 750 slaves gained their freedom aboard the Union gunboats. Severe defeat for the Confederates. In a few hours, private properties turned into armed enemies. Because many of these ex-slaves would now become fierce Union soldiers. The war finally ended and slavery was abolished. But deep down in her heart, Moses knew that the promised land remained just that. A mere promise. She was 40 years old now, she had given years to the Union war effort, and yet she had received no regular salary and no recognitions of her contributions. Harriet knew that it took more than a war to win such an important battle. So she spent the last decades of her life supporting the women's suffrage movement and helping others, which dragged her deeper into poverty. In 1908, she established a home for older, poor African Americans in Auburn, New York. She died in March 1913 and was buried in Auburn with military honors. I freed a thousand slaves, and I could have freed a thousand more if they only knew they were slaves. Might that be an actual quote or not? It resonates with Harriet's life and echoes the writings of Henry David Thoreau. Disobedience is the true foundation of liberty. The obedient must be slaves. Thanks for watching and see you all on the other side.